Hey, this is Chris Hansen with E1 Solutions. I'm one of our senior technical consultants, and today we're going to look at a couple flags that we can set within a SOP map. Um, so we're doing a sales order integration, and within the nodes that we can map to, there are a couple specific fields on those nodes that make the integration a little bit easier to use depending on what's in your source data. So in my example, I already have my map pulled open, SOP map. We're just going from Excel to GP um, because Excel is easy for me to go ahead and change around that data. Um, for this example and in my source data um, for this scenario I do have enough data to create a couple sales order integrations now in this particular set of data I do have a total document amount of a column and then I also have a unit price and an extended price column on here um, so I'm able to map those directly into the into the map um, but if we were to assume that I didn't actually have the doc amount column or the unit price or extended uh, price for each unit, we can go ahead and set a couple flags within the nodes to calculate that for us. Um, so if we didn't have them in the file in the first place, we wouldn't have to add them in there just to get the map to run. So to show you where these are, uh, let me go ahead and expand just the nodes I've mapped to. Um, so I've got the header node mapped um, and the line node mapped on here um, for this particular map. And when I open it up, we're able to see that I haven't actually marked the unit price or extended price um, as being mapped. So even though I had it in my file, I've already modified this and taken them out of the mapping um, on there. Instead, um, if we scroll down to the end of the fields on here, we've caught a couple flags or fields that we have uh, list options for that are checkboxes in GP that let us default the pricing and default the extended price. Now we can mark one or both of these, however many we need. In this case, it's got both of them checked, so it's going to go ahead and take our pricing info from GP setup for each item, and then it's also going to take that price and multiply it by the quantity we provide to get that extended price on there. Um, so if you have, say you had the unit price but not the extended price, you could provide one, use this flag to come up with the other, or any combination that you, you want of these two. So we can set these on the line node, and that's going to let us go ahead and auto generate or auto calculate that the uh, prices coming in um, for the items and then on the header I mentioned we had a document amount in our file but if we didn't have that and we don't want to provide it in my case again I don't have it mapped there is a flag on the header that lets you go ahead and have eConnect calculate this for us so this one's called calculate subtotal from lines um, we go ahead and flip that to true so when you're creating your integrations specifically to GP, a lot of times the nodes are going to have different flags like these um, that allow you to do actions without necessarily having that data um, available from the start. So one way to find out um, if your nodes have anything that allow you to do this is just to look through our, our destination fields within our mapping. You could go ahead and open up that eConnect schema reference. So if I open up eConnect, it should be on any machine you install Smart Connect and eConnect on. Take a look at the programmer's guide. This would allow you to go ahead and hop through any group node type down to the node to see if the fields are on there um, to find that as well. But in general, when you're looking for these fields, they're going to be near the end of the of the field or the attribute list um, on the node. Um, so they're normally down here towards the bottom uh, if that's going to be available to you. So just a quick uh, tip on doing SOP maps. Um, these type of flags are available on a lot of the other transaction maps as well. Uh, they'll hopefully help you guys out if you don't have that in your source data when you're creating these integrations. Thanks.